in the last class we uh, did the variational form formulation for uh, the beam problem uh, now how we did was we went from the uh, differential equation uh, and uh, then we uh, we obtained a variational statement and uh, today we would do do it in a uh, slightly different way so it start from the potential energy statement or aim statement and here we are trying to minimize this potential energy with respect to w of x which is the deflection and uh, in goes your strain energy minus work potential so st for strain energy you need the expression for strain and strain within elastic limit is simply stress divided by Young's modulus. Now, of course, we can uh, directly go to the expression for strain, but we do know that the expression for bending st stress, uh, which would be something like this, the bending moment. And if uh, your y coordinate on the cross section and the area moment of inertia of the cross section. Okay. So this is the expression for strain. And therefore, the strain energy density, that is per unit volume, would be half E epsilon squared. So, Now again, uh, in this expression actually, you can substitute the expression for bending moment and uh, that we know to be EI W double prime. So eventually we have uh, these terms cancelled out and uh, therefore the expression for strain energy density should be e w double prime y squared and then if you integrate this quantity over the volume so first you need to integrate with respect to the area and then with respect to x or the length You need to do that for strain energy density, which is but the above expression, which is uh, this quantity. Now, this W, of course, is the deflection of the neutral axis or the so called elastica. So, this doesn't change across the cross section, neither does the Young's modulus. If you assume homogeneity so you can bring these two quantities outside of the integration so you have uh, the following and this quantity again gives you the area moment of inertia so in the end you have 1 by 2 ei w double prime squared dx that is the expression of the strain energy and work potential remember there are three types of loading 
I'm still assuming a cantilever beam. So in that you have an arbitrary distributed load. So you'd take this convention, whatever is pointing upwards is positive. And then at the tip, you have a, a concentrated force P and a concentrated counterclockwise moment M. So this is the expression for the work potential. Now, everywhere there is this distributed load. Uh, also, W is considered positive if it is upwards. So Q of X, W of X is the work potential due to the distributed load per unit length. And then you integrate with respect to X. So that is the work potential due to the distributed load. Then you have M times W prime of X. So the moment times is the rotation. And uh, then the applied force times the deflection. So if you put all of them together, this is the expression of the potential energy, which is uh, 1 by 2, 0 to L, EI W double prime squared, DX minus 0 to L. Q W D X minus M W prime. Achha. Here I have made a mistake. It should be W prime at L. And this one should also be W at L. So this is the expression for the potential energy. And uh, as we have discussed in the last class, the equivalent expression for, uh, so we have shown that equivalently we can get 0 to L EI W double prime V double prime because this quantity right there is A W, w, the symmetric bilinear form equals 0 to L Q V DX plus M times V of L plus P times, sorry, V of L for all V of X. So what is V? V is the variation V is the variation of uh, W. And this is the V statement for a, uh, so basically it means that you can take any arbitrary function V, which satisfies the boundary condition that uh, mm, V zero equals zero and V prime zero equals zero. It's because uh, at X equals zero, the value of W is given. not because the values are zero, but because the values are given that you have variation zero. And you see earlier, we got the same expression from the differential equation. Now we are getting the same expression from the transfer of potential energy to, uh, sorry, the M statement to V statement. Okay. So we'll, we'll keep that equation aside. So that's what we need for today's class. The rest of the things we would get rid of. Any part ta ki Sir, uh, 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 uh,
আমি মোমেন্টের সাথে যে আমার দুইটা হার্ড মানে আমার ভেরিয়েন্স কার্ড আছে বেসিক্যালি আমি মাল্টিপ্লাই করছি ভি ড্যাশ আর আমার পয়েন্ট কোড এর সাথে আমি যে ভিটা মাল্টিপ্লাই করছি মানে এটা এই এই জিনিসটা আমার একটু আমি এটা আগে ক্লাসে একটা আমি চেক করেছিলাম এটা আমি বুঝতে পারিনি ব্যাপারটা মানে আমি এই স্টেটমেন্টটা যখন আমি কনফিগারেশনটাকে আমি ইনক্লুড করছি তখন আমি এটাকে মানে কিভাবে আর কি মানে লিখছি এটা আগের বেশ কয়েকটা ক্লাসে দুটো তিন তিনটে ক্লাসে আমরা ওয়ার্ক পোটেনশিয়াল ডিফাইন করেছি সো ইফ ইউ থিঙ্ক অ্যাবাউট ইট ওয়েন ইউ আর টকিং অ্যাবাউট দ্য ওয়ার্ক পোটেনশিয়াল অফ আ গিভেন ফোর্স দেন উই মাল্টিপ্লাই দ্য সো ওয়েন আই এম টকিং অ্যাবাউট ওয়ার্ক পোটেনশিয়াল অফকোর্স আই এম টকিং অ্যাবাউট দ্য এম স্টেটমেন্ট uh so when mm-hmm. in the aim statement we are talking about the work potential uh, of a given force so we are multiplying the displacement uh of the point of application of the force if yes, you sir. replace the force with a moment like quantity then we should also replace the displacement with uh, rotation in this case the tangent which is the first derivative um that way we get the work potential now work potential what sort of uh, that that um, the fact that work potential is is uh, somewhat a mathematical term uh, uh, not uh, and it is uh, not very useful to try to find out its true physical significance that we have also discussed but in a way we can have uh, an ad hoc uh, understanding of what that quantity is but if uh, displacement goes with force so the slope which is uh, the tangent uh, which could also be called as the rotation because tan theta is close to theta for very tiny theta very very tiny theta so that that's how it goes with the moment now all that goes into your uh, potential energy statement now in the last class we proved Uh, in the mm, you know in the previous class of the last class we uh, mentioned last but uh, in the last class we proved that uh, mm, that the aim mm, statement and v statement has certain equivalency and that involves a symmetric bilinear form auv and a linear form lv now the work potential comes under that uh, linear form uh, lv or rather in the mm, put in uh, aim statement it comes out comes out as uh, l of u or l of w and uh, in the variational statement it comes off as uh, l of v now please try to understand the significance of this statement okay uh, that this this is a statement which uh, which which is a problem given on w and on by by solving uh, this problem that you get w uh, given in this v statement right there so uh, what does this problem say what does this equation mean it means that w is such a function w is such a function that you can take any arbitrary function v provided it satisfies the essential boundary condition or wherever the essential boundary condition is given it is zero and we could be any arbitrary function you see x x equals l is not uh, not your gamma u that is actually gamma t that's where the bending moment and the sorry not a concentrated moment or a concentrated force has been applied that's your traction boundary so v could be anything arbitrary uh, if v is an arbitrary function satisfying this v l and v prime l could be anything but that doesn't matter at all matter okay what matters is that uh this whole expression this whole expression uh mm, you know this whole equation holds irrespective of the value of v at x equal l okay and that actually puts a lot of constraint a equation on w and by solving this one you can get uh, you can get your w now earlier we have seen that we can get the differential equation or the so called strong form out of the variational statement but today for the first time we would see how we can solve a problem from the variational statement itself okay 
so okay. uh, uh, so we are not uh, as of now not jumping into finite element method but we are in this class talking about the predecessors of finite element method which are the traditional methods that uses the weak forms to solve solve problems okay so the first one that you try today is uh, relay reads method okay so in this method we say that we are looking for an approximate solution w tilde we are using a new numerical method this one is also a numerical method and therefore we are solving for an approximate method w tilde which comprises of the following functions of uh, x okay now the ci's are coefficients these are merely coefficients and actually we are solving for this coefficients only okay and what are this phi i's so phi 0 and phi i's these are known functions of x okay so idea here is that you are trying to solve for an unknown function you are trying to approximately solve for an unknown function that's the right correct phrase by employing certain unknown coefficients and known functions okay so you are trying to approximate an unknown function using a set of known functions and unknown coefficients now what are the rules the rule is phi 0 satisfies essential boundary conditions and this phi i is going from 1 to n are all zero in the places where the essential boundary condition is given in the boundaries in the portion of the boundary where the essential boundary condition is given okay now let's stick to our example of that cantilever beam with distributed load and uh, concentrated force and moment at the tip okay so basically this equation right here let's stick to this variational form okay so so that is the idea we can uh, for example start with uh, phi 0 okay phi 0 must satisfy the essential boundary condition now remember in this problem the essential boundary conditions are that uh, these are the essential boundary condition that uh, at x equals 0 w is 0 and uh, w prime is 0 so these are the conditions on phi so uh, phi in gamma u should be 
equal to W. Okay. And also the phi prime should be equal to W prime. Now, by satisfying these two conditions, we can say that phi zero is essentially zero. Okay. So we can take phi zero to be, now we would go for the smallest function. I mean, we could have also gone with uh, x squared. Okay. Then also at x equals zero, both of these quantities would be zero. But we should go for the, you know, the function. If we are going for polynomial, the polynomial of the lowest order that satisfies that condition. For example, if uh, the boundary conditions, if uh, if it were a simply supported beam, where the condition would be that uh, W0 equals WL equals 0 for a simply supported beam. In that case, I, we would take phi 0 to be some C0 times So if you substitute x equal 0, this goes to 0. If you substitute x equal L, this also goes to 0. Okay. Now, in this case also, we could have gone with x, but that is not required. Okay. Sorry. We could cannot go with x because then the first derivative would be, first derivative would be non-zero. Okay. So we cannot go with x. So it has to be 0. Okay. Now I am showing you an example how you are supposed to take the first function. Okay, so you can refer to them as the trial functions. But to be frank, these these are more appropriately called as basis functions. Okay, for example, if you take only two phi i's, phi 1 equals x squared and phi 2 equals x cube. Then you have a function set, set of functions, which are only this, of this nature. C1 x squared plus c2 x cube. That's it. Your only degrees of freedom are c1 and c2. Now, as you can imagine, this set right there, this set of functions right there is a subset of global set, which can include any polynomial, any exponential, or any uh, sinusoidal function, or any arbitrarily complicated function. Okay. Now, we know that we can, ex uh, you know, uh, expand uh, any given continuous function using Taylor series as a polynomial of infinite number of terms. So it's like uh, this one is an infinite dimensional space. And here you are trying to work with two dimensional space. Okay. And that's where the analogy between a function and a vector comes in. Okay. So, uh, so you can, uh, for example, you can describe a vector a 2D vector with two components. Here you would be able to describe the um, 2D vector or 2D function uh, using C1 and C2. Okay. So the point is uh, not only does your approximate solution W is a function of this nature, your variation, your variation is also of this nature. Okay. In addition, your variation must satisfy the essential boundary condition. Okay. So variation could be taken as, uh, let's say, C1 bar x squared plus C2 bar x cubed. Okay. And this C1 and C2 are arbitrary. And uh, for any arbitrary values of C1 bar and C2 bar, we would satisfy the essential boundary condition. See, 
see we are trying to get an approximate solution okay if you are looking for an exact solution we cannot leave no stone unturned so that means we should be looking for uh, in the ocean of uh, mm, uh, all possible functions in the infinite space of all possible functions but we are looking for an approximate solution okay so we can make our searching space smaller a subset okay of that infinite dimensional space and to be frank we are searching in a two dimensional space okay and uh, any given dimension let's say if you are working on a plane okay you can either independently move on move in x or move in y so you have two degrees of freedom a particle has two degrees of freedom just like in this case you have two degrees of freedom which are c1 and c2 okay and uh, what you are trying to do here is to find that best values of c1 and c2 you may be looking for an approximate solution but you want the best approximate given the subspace that you are choosing okay so uh, you are looking for that subspace which uh, i mean sorry we, you are looking for those c1 and c2 which is the best solution best approximate solution to the problem in hand of course you would have gotten the exact solution if you are looking for that infinite dimensional set the set of all possible functions or if by accident you are you are able to search in a subset or you are uh, you if by accident if you search in a subset which does actually con contain the solution you would get the exact solution okay so that's the idea because you see this potent uh, this uh, uh, um, rational statement of yours comes from the potential energy statement so you are minimizing something okay so what do we know first of all we are getting an approximate solution in general we are getting an approximate solution because still now we do not know what sort of function q is q of x could be anything it could be sinusoidal function it could be zero so if you are searching in a subset in general you are trying to get an approximate solution but if somehow that subset does by accident contain the solution then we would get the exact solution okay so let's see how does that happen Okay. Now I'm not directly going into the beam expression. You'd go there uh, later, but for the time being, stick to the general uh, V statement. So this is what the V statement would look like with the approximate function. So a. again w tilde is going to be our approximate solution v equals a of v okay now let us substitute the expressions for w tilde and v remember this one is 50 plus uh, summation over i ci phi i and v is simply ci bar phi i you see since the only purpose of phi 0 is to satisfy the essential boundary condition so v doesn't have an equivalent term because v is supposed to be zero where where there is essential boundary condition so ci bar phi i so let's write down that expression phi 0 plus summation over ci phi i and summation over ci bar phi i equals uh, a of summation over ci bar, bar phi i okay now again the variation statement is incomplete without the arbitrariness of variation but when you write it in this expression what is arbitrary the arbitrary thing is 
CI bar, this coefficients are arbitrary. It doesn't matter what coefficient do you choose, you're always going to get this expression to be true. CI are such, quant such values, okay? CI are, CI are, uh, CIs are what we are trying to solve here, okay? These coefficients are we trying to solve here. And these coefficients are such that no matter what set of CI bar that you choose, this is always going to be true. Now let us expand this expression because symmetric bilinear. So first of all, A, phi 0, which is first of all, summation over CI bar, A phi 0 phi i plus double summation I goes from 1 to n, j goes from 1 to n, ci, ci bar, a of phi i, phi i equals summation over ci bar, a of phi i. Now remember, uh, this might look a little complicated. Uh, sorry, this one is C I C I J and this is phi I phi phi J. Okay. Now remember all C I's are arbitrary. Okay. So imagine CI is non zero. Some CI is non zero. Sorry, so, uh, some CI bar is non, non zero or some CJ bar is non zero. Okay. And CK, C bar K is zero where K not equal J. And K goes from 1 to n. So because all these CI bars are arbitrary, I'm just imagining only one of them to be non-zero and rest of them to be zero. I made a mistake. It should be CJ, CJ. Okay, so therefore we don't have to go with the summation. Okay, we can only take the coefficients of CJ bar and this is what is going to be true a phi 0 phi j plus summation over i C i a phi i phi j minus a l of phi i to be equal to 0. And that is true for all j. Because this equation has to be true for any arbitrary set of C i bars. So we can imagine a situation where only one of the CJs is non-zero and rest of the C case where K not equal J are all zeros. Okay. So I'm only just taking out the coefficients or whatever is multiplied to CJ bar. So this, this terms, this term within the square bracket and each of those terms in the square bracket for different J's should be equal to zero. That is the only way. So basically what we are getting, we are getting n equations. You see, we have n variables to solve for and that's why we need n equations and that, those n equations we are getting 
by employing the arbitrariness of n cj bars ei part ta ki bujhe jacche বুঝে যাচ্ছে না এই পার্টটা না বুঝে এটা এটা বুঝতে পারি কি মানে আমরা বেসিক্যালি একটা একটা মানে সিঙ্গেল কেসের জন্য সিনারিওর জন্য আমি সিজেটাকে এরকম একটা কেকে কনসিডার করছি যেটা জন্য আমি সিজেটাকে শুধু না ধরো ধরো আমাকে 10টা জিনিসের সাম দেওয়া আছে x plus y plus z ओके तीनটে জিনিসই ধরো x plus y plus z এর সাম দেয়া রয়েছে ওকে রাদার আমাকে একটা এরকম এক্সপ্রেশন দেয়া রয়েছে যে a1 times a plus a2 times b plus a3 times c equals 0 বলা আছে this summation has been given to be zero that i know তার পাশাপাশি এটাও বলা আছে this is true for arbitrary values of uh, a1 a2 and a3 a1 a2 and a3 ঠিক আছে so i can do a, do a mental exercise because a1 a2 and a3 are arbitrary and this has to be true for any arbitrary situation আমি mentally ধরে নিতে পারি এমন একটা situation where a2 and a3 are zero but a1 is non zero mm-hmm. and you see the values of a b and c they do not depend on a1 a2 and a3 mm. they are independent so they are independent and so are a1 a2 and a3 okay now if i can imagine a situation where a1 is non zero but a2 and a3 are zero okay and then also this equation must be satisfied but there is no way the values of a1 a2 and a3 are affecting a b and c so the only way that should be possible is when a itself is zero and then i can use the same uh, thought experiment having a1 a and a3 equal zero but a2 non zero that should tell me that b is zero and similarly i would get c equal zero so what i'm doing here is i'm trying to find out the uh, you know essentially the coefficients of cj bar for any arbitrary j okay uh, and uh, and then what i'm trying to say here or rather what i'm trying to argue here is that if this term is not trivially zero okay and if i can imagine a situation where uh, every cj bar is zero except for one of them then this doesn't go to zero but this has to this this whole summation must go to zero at any condition any arbitrary values of cjs how is that possible if i imagine so CJ is zero. if all cjs are zero except for one of them mm. the only way that is possible is what that cj is multiplying that is equal to zero but you you can see this coefficient cj doesn't appear in this expression here there is a ci mm. but this cj bar which is the coefficient from the expression of the variation mm-hmm. that doesn't appear anywhere so these two are independent okay so there is no way the values of uh, cj bar are affecting the expressions that are within the square brackets okay so the only way um, we can employ the arbitrariness of cj bar in this equation right here is through setting whatever is multiplying the cj bar is actually zero baki der bolchi baki ra ki acho na ki chaliye diye chole gechho onno kotha yes sir present 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 thakle dutu proshner antoto ekta uttor dite hobe bojha jacche ba bojha jacche na 
না বোঝা গেলে ক্লাসে কি আর করতে হবে ওই বাইলিনিয়ারিটি অফ এ এর ব্যাপারটা তো আমি বুঝতে পারছিলাম না বাইলিনিয়ারিটি অফ এ হুম ওই যে এখানে ওই কি হলো হ্যাঁ সামেশন অফ সি জি বা দেখো লিনিয়ারিটি বলতে এটা বোঝায় a u v plus w is essentially a of u v plus a of u w okay and if i multiply let's say alpha and beta to u v and w so they simply come out of the operator okay so that's what is bilinearity or i mean if you understand linearity then bilinearity is also trivial okay bilinearity is when that works for this one and this one both okay 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 sir. if anything is linear like differentiation or integration these things are linear okay mm. so if i uh, if i write down v double prime plus uh, let's say uh, z double prime can i not write this down as 0 to l e i w double prime p double prime dx plus 0 to l e i w double prime z double prime dx so that's what is the linearity okay. if you want to assign a coefficient yes that's there okay okay so this is what linearity means by linearity would be that i can do the same operation with w also the one that we did with the v i can also do that with w that's when it is bilinear and what do i mean by symmetry because i can write this expression as ei v double prime w double prime that's what is symmetry so a as we discussed earlier in the last two classes is a symmetric bilinear form ar baki baki bojhe jacche sob ki korchi ধরো আমার কাছে যদি এরকম দুটো এক্সপ্রেশন থাকে আমি হয়তো কিছু স্টেপ জাম্প করেছি এখানে ওকে কিন্তু বেসিক্যালি দ্যাট ওয়ে আমি অনলি গোয়িং টু গেট দিস এক্সপ্রেশন ওকে ইফ উই ইফ ইউ রিলি ওয়ান্ট বি টু শো দোজ এক্সপ্রেশন সো আমি জাস্ট টেকিং দ্য এক্সাম্পল অফ এ সো এ First of all, I can do phi 0, summation over cj bar phi j, then a summation over ci phi i, summation over cj bar phi i, phi j, okay. So that you can understand, right? Mm. Yes, sir. Okay, it's like v v plus z okay now if i take this term here there is not just v and z there are n terms so for each of those terms i can do the same exercise okay what about the next term next one let's say for the time being i i take this one intact okay so i can do summation over j a summation over ci phi i phi j okay of course cj bar phi j and the next i can repeat the operation on this one and bring the summation over i you see these summations are also independent of one another so you have ci cj bar a phi i phi j Hmm. Okay. Okay. Not, no, 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 it's clear. Now it's clear. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was just basically getting confused from uh, that step to when you were going from okay. the above step. Okay, okay. My step. suggestion is uh, uh, each of these you try to derive on your own. Okay. At times uh, for me, they are so trivial that I uh, probably skip the steps. okay anyways uh, so we have 
the following expression to be true for every every j right there okay and uh, in the end this is our this is the expression that we are going to get summation over a i j c j you see i can write this uh, a phi i phi j as a phi j phi i and then i can argue that this i mean this i and j are like dummy indices okay that means uh, i can simply replace this with j is right and call this one i and call this one i call this one i and this one j and then interchange okay so that's what i'm mentally doing and trust me on this one this is what you are going to get equals l of acha not l so in the end you you are going to get this expression where aij is uh, a of phi i phi j and uh, if i is a of phi i minus a of phi 0 phi i and this expression right here can be written as a matrix vector form where essentially this quantity is your stiffness matrix and this right here is your force vector we are almost at the door step of finite element method but here we are using a traditional method called rayleigh ritz method and our finite element method uh, differs slightly the approach is the very same it depends only on how we take phi i and phi j's okay that's how only in that part does the finite element method differ okay uh, so basically we get a set of equations n cross n right here n cross 1 right here and n cross 1 right here and by solving those n cross 1 linear algebraic equation listen to this word very carefully by solving those linear algebraic equation that we get our approximate solution w which is phi 0 plus summation over ci phi i okay why is the algebraic part so important you see when you are trying to get an exact solution when you are exactly trying to find out the function you get the strong form from the variational statement and you have what a differential equation and you solve that differential equation be it linear or non linear whatever be the case actually our first example brackets to come problem gave us a non linear equation and luckily for us that non linear equation could be solved using a closed form method that is not true for most of the non linear equations and even um, in many cases um, for linear equations closed form solution is very difficult to achieve but luckily for us we had so the one way is to go to the strong form or the uh, differential equation okay uh, through euler lagrange equation which is essentially a differential equation and solve for the function okay that is one way that is how you get the exact solution the approximate solution for the approximate solution what we did we assumed some sort of known trial functions and we said only their coefficients are arbitrary the coefficients are unknown and 
by finding out those coefficients we would be approximately getting the function that we are trying to solve for so our approximate solution requires us to solve for a set of coefficients set of numbers set of scalars not functions so that's why the problem in hand becomes the solution of a set of algebraic equations in this case these are linear equations set of linear equations i'm not saying that is the case always but going from solution of a differential equation now we have gone to solution of a set of algebraic equations okay and once we solve this example and uh, mm, there is another traditional method that i wish to cover which is galerkin's method or uh, in more generally it would be weighted residual method but that we would cover in the next class but today i want to cover only rayleigh risk method so once we do the solution to the example that is uh, in that rectangle in the right so once we solve that then we know that how we can get an approximate solution by solving a set of algebraic equation but a part ta ki bojha jacche je this for each j j goes from uh, 1 to n i can write i can write each of these algebraic equations in the end i'll have n algebraic equations or in this case n linear equations and these n linear equations can be uh, those are the linear equations in cjs okay please understand these are cjs not c bar js we are not solving for the variation we cannot because it is arbitrary we are only solving for the approximate function so we are solving for this cjs and we have n linear equations on cjs so there is no way we cannot represent them in this matrix form okay and it's just that uh, the coefficients of cjs are uh, a phi i phi js and now we are calling them as a i js and that would form our matrix ei part ta ki bujhe jacche yes sir okay अच्छा नाउ फॉर आस ए फाइ आई फाइ जे इज जीरो टूएल ई आई फाइ आई डबल प्राइम फाइ जे डबल प्राइम डी एक्स ओके now please understand this is how we took our approximate solution so phi 0 was 0 then it was c1 x squared plus c2 x cube okay of course there are certain rules on how you can choose your so called trial or basis functions why am i calling them basis functions for example in 3d our basis one of the basis could be this 100 010 -0, 0 i'm talking about vectors 0 01 and i can form uh, so basically you are more familiar in this format right so these are called basis functions cartesian base the together they form base each of the vectors are basis basis vectors and any vector u uh is a uh, u x i plus uh, u y j 
and use it k okay so this is true for any arbitrary ux uy and use it right now what are ux uy and use it these are the coefficients of the basis functions okay basis vectors now this x square and x cube serve as basis functions okay in our so called 2d function space and uh, the c1 and c2 are the coefficients just like ux uy and use it okay so that's what the analogy is there are some more analogies but uh, more and more we um, dwell with it we'll realize that functions are essentially vectors mane tomake jodi ami excel sheet e sin theta plot korte boli how do you plot you probably take values of x zero pi by hundred twice pi by hundred let's say up to pi by two and then you accordingly set their values you can you know write their values okay so it's zero over here some value over here some value over here so approximately pi by 100 right here because you see sin theta is close to theta here also approximately pi by 2 uh, sorry 2 pi by 100 or pi by 50 and by the time it reaches pi by 2 it is 1 okay so what these are essentially these are vectors okay and you know that your sin theta curve becomes smoother and smoother if you take more and more points and what does that signify that only signifies that your function right here is best represented in infinite dimension so essentially what you are doing you are taking line segments to represent sin theta but sin theta is not linear right so you to represent that exactly you need infinite one of them okay so this is one more analogy how we can relate to functions being uh, sorry vec uh, functions being vectors acha so uh, this is this is what our um, you see our uh, approximate function looks like and we are solving for c2 and c3 so this is our phi 1 and this is our phi 2 we are solving for c1 and c2 so can you tell me how uh, so in the end in the end this is what we are going to get a11 a12 a21 a22 times uh, c1 c2 equals uh, f1 f2 okay now you might recall that uh, if i is uh, is a of phi i minus a of phi 0 phi i but luckily for us this phi 0 for the cantilever example only for the cantilever example this is zero okay so we only got to deal with this one okay so now what is the expression for uh, l of phi i in our case l of phi i is um, 0 to l q of x phi i of x dx plus m times phi i at l plus p times phi i at l m times phi prime and p times phi i for the sake of simplicity assume 
q of x equals q0. A constant that is uniformly distributed load coupled with a concentrated moment and a concentrated force at the free end of the cantilever. Okay. So now it is your job and you have 10 minutes for that to find out the coefficients a11, a12, a22, etc. And also f1 and f2. You know what are phi1 and phi2? You know what are the expressions of aij and a phi? Okay. So try to get the expressions or expressions for the A matrix and the F vector. Once you have that, we can solve for C1 and C2. Okay. Ita kora jabe? Ekhon theke 10 minute dile ita kora jabe? Start kochi. Acha ekta dinish bola di. If you have noticed already, if you haven't noticed already, A12 is going to be equal to A21, making A matrix a symmetric matrix. Now, how does that work? Remember, A phi i phi j which is aij is also a phi j phi i we discussed this earlier that a is a symmetric bilinear form equals aji that's why i didn't ask you to figure out how much is a21 because that is going to be a12 okay so try to get the expressions for aijs and a phi's এই পার্টটা কি করতে বলেছি বোঝা গেছে কি শুধু ওই ইন্টিগ্রেশন গুলো করবে ফর এক্সাম্পল ইফ ইউ লুক ইন টু দ্য এক্সপ্রেশন ফর এফ ওয়ান অ্যাপার্ট ফ্রম দ্য ইন্টিগ্রেশন ইট উড বি এম টাইমস এম টাইমস টু এল এন্ড দেন পি টাইমস এল স্কোয়ার Because phi1 is x squared, x squared uh, derivative is twice x and at x equal l that would be twice l. So it would be m times twice l plus p times p times l squared Uh, 
Senhor.
ইন্টিগ্রেশন গুলো করা যাচ্ছে স্যার একটা জিনিস জিজ্ঞেস করার ছিল হুম বলো স্যার এই যে প্র্যাকটিস সেটা হচ্ছে মানে আমার মানে এআই যে মানে a11 a12 a21 a22 এটাতে আমি যেটা মানে ডেটা কোড মানে ফর্মুলেট করতে হচ্ছে মানে লাস্টে আমার a11 টা 4 কনস্ট্যান্ট কনস্ট্যান্ট 4 4 ইনটু ইন্টিগ্রেশন অফ ei dx 0 to l লিমিটস আর তারপরে 12 ei x dx 0 to l এটা হচ্ছে a12 আর a21 এর জন্য আর a22 এর জন্য 36 ইন্টিগ্রেশন 0 to l ei x square dx না না যা আসছে সেটা আসছে কিন্তু করা যাচ্ছে কি মানে এখানে আমি বেসিকালি 51 আর 5 5i আর 5j যেটা মানে ওখানে তো বেসিক্যালি আমি জাস্ট মানে 5 1 এর জন্য যে করেসপন্ডিং এক্স স্কয়ার এর 5 2 এর জন্য আচ্ছা f1 টা কি এক সেকেন্ড এক সেকেন্ড এই f1 টা কি রকম আছে q0 টাইমস l l কিউব ডিভাইডেড বাই 3 প্লাস টুইস l টাইমস m প্লাস p l স্কয়ার এরকম আছে স্যার টুই 2 ml প্লাস p l স্কয়ার টা আছে কিন্তু ভাগ ভাগ করা আমার ইন্টিগ্রেশন অফ q x স্কয়ার dx इंटीग्रेशन गो মানে এটা তো সিমিলারলি এটা তো আমাদের এগুলো আমার ধারণা এগুলো মুখে মুখেই হয়ে যাবে ঠিক আছে তো লেটস সি আমরা কি কি এক্সপ্রেশন পাই फोर एल ताई तो हाँ हाँ फोर ये क्या बात है नेक्स्ट टाइम वन टू आह वन टू होते हैं सर ट्वेल्व ये ईआईएल ना 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 सिक्स आह ईआईएल स्क्वायर सिक्स एल स्क्वायर बोल चो सेम स्क्वायर हाँ मतलब सिक्स एल स्क्वायर ये सर स्कोड So here also it is six L squared, right? Yes, sir. And how many got to have? Twelve L cube. Same. Oh, twelve L. Twelve L cube. L cube. L cube. L cube. Okay. Okay. If one got to have, sir. Um. 
क्यू एल क्यूब बाई थ्री प्लस टू एम एल प्लस पी एल स्क्वायर एंड दिस वन क्यू एल टू और फोर बाई फोर टू क्यू 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 ओके क्यू एल टू और फोर बाई फोर क्यू क्यू एल टू और फोर बाई फोर प्लस थ्री एम एल स्क्वायर प्लस पी एल क्यू ओके now uh can we solve this set of equations ekta to khub sohoj seta hocche okay now can you solve for c1 and c2 yes sir no i need you to solve for c1 and c2 oh. actually if you multiply the first equation with 2 and then subtract this one you can get c1 so multiply with 2l over here
अच्छा इफ आई डू वन पॉइंट फाइव टाइम्स द फर्स्ट इक्वेशन माइनस द सेकेंड इक्वेशन देन कैन वी गेट द सी टू वैल्यू वन पॉइंट फाइव वेल Yes sir. Mm, yes sir. Yes sir. So, what is the expression for C two? Yes, one Notice how C two doesn't have the term of m. इर कारण टा की भेबे बोलते पर भे. Why doesn't C two has m in its expression? Anyways, get the expression for C two. C2 टू की एक्सप्रेशन आ माइनस आ ना माइनस माइनस 
নাকি অন্য কিছু হবে স্যার এই এল টার্মটাই থাকবে না পি এর সাথে পি এর সাথে এল টার্মটা থাকবে না আচ্ছা আচ্ছা ওকে ঠিক আছে এবার হ্যাঁ ওকে এবার আমরা দেখলাম যে c1 has m in its expression but c2 doesn't depend on whatever moment do you provide c2 এর এক্সপ্রেশনটা ডিপেন্ডই করে না c2 এর ভ্যালুটা ডিপেন্ডই করে না whatever moment that you provide and here you are trying to get an approximate solution তাহলে এবার হচ্ছে আমাদের মিস্ট্রি সলভ করার পালা whether it's a cantilever beam or a simply supported beam আমি যদি কোথাও একটা কনসেন্ট্রেটেড মুভমেন্ট দিই থিঙ্ক আবাউট ইট দিস ইজ এ কোয়াড্রেটিক ইকুয়েশন সরি 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 বলা ভুল হলো ইফ দ্য মুভমেন্ট ইজ নন জিরো ওকে ইফ দ্য সরি ইফ দ্য মুভমেন্ট ইজ কনস্ট্যান্ট okay bending moment if it if that is a constant then w is a quadratic equation w is has is a, is a parabola in x of course that comes from the approximation that we take uh, radius of curvature to be uh, w double prime i mean uh, curvature to be w double prime where it should have been but the fact is w prime is so small than 1 then the square is even smaller let's say w prime is 0.1 square is 0.01 then you take uh, then you raise that to any power okay it's not a significant quantity so so that's why we approximate 1 by 2 to be approx uh, to be w double prime and that's how we get this expression and with that expression w becomes quadratic okay eba dekho we were we were looking for a solution where w could be some sort of uh, c1 x squared plus c1 c2 x cube so up to cubic was allowed okay when we are looking for the solution in a set where the fun function could be at most a cubic function okay as we said earlier if the problem set if the if the set of functions contain the solution you are going to get exact solution to be frank if there were just this moment if there were just this moment okay then even a set which has w tilde equals c1 plus x square would have given us correct solution sir ekta ekta arekbar we are looking for approximate solution but every time our searching set contains the solution we are going to get the exact solution if the system had only moment no distributed force or a concentrated force then a set of functions like c1 x squared would have given us correct solution okay now since all of these problems are linear problems linear differential equation and all so superimposition is allowed linear superimposition is allowed okay and that's why c2 is not affected by the value of the concentrated moment at the free end 
whereas it is of course affected by the concentrated force okay now i would ask you so this is your assignment number 1 consider three cases case 1 m equals m is non zero p equals zero q equals zero case 2 m is zero q is zero p is non zero and case 3 m equal 0 p equal 0 q is non zero and solve for the expression of w rather solve for c1 and c2 and check in which cases do you get exact solution in which case do you get exact solution so what you can do is compare the tip deflection for each case with exact solution so here we can try the case 2 and let's let me take the classic cantilever beam with tip tip load so p is non zero but q and m are zero so here we go c1 equals minus 1 by ei pl divided by 2 and c2 equals minus 1 by ei p divided by 6 and of course i can write down the expression for w but substitute W at L, and this is what you get. So, how much is half plus one sixth? i think somewhere somewhere i made a mistake right. i guess c1 would be non negative if you check uh, the earlier expression i believe c1 should be non negative because it was uh, 4 l that we are multiplying with twice l that should have been 8 and then we subtracted uh, 6 l squared so this should have been non negative somehow we made a mistake so the point is uh, this is positive and uh, then half minus 1/6 is 1/3 uh, actually so in the end you have pl cube divided by 3 ei uh, sir uh, in the c2 equation huh? so i think that will be q not l by 36 the primary equation in which uh, we are substituting the q and uh, value, q value and the m value okay so you think this one is 36 
yes sir, because we are ultimately dividing by 3 l cube at that time uh, it's basically becoming 12 into 3 so 36 okay fine no no issues no issues okay. anyways for cantilever with tip load we do not need uh, the q0 but do you hmm. see that you are getting the exact solution are you familiar with this expression right here pl cube divided by 3i yes sir. are you yes sir okay so do you see that you are getting an exact solution because your searching set contains the solution okay because we know if we have a constant shear force constant shear force which basically means the bending moment is a linear function okay where you substitute ei w double prime equals uh, p times l minus x once you substitute that rather you substitute that then you get exact solution okay so uh, so basically you are going to get a cubic function in x and because you are also searching for the solution in a set where the functions are also cubic and zero at uh, the and the value and the first derivative are zero at x equals zero so you are getting an exact solution so whenever the subset contains the solution you are going to get the exact solution that's the idea but you see if i replace the same thing with uh, distributed load distributed load So your P would be a linear function. Your bending moment would be would be a quadratic function, and therefore your deflection would no longer be cubic. It would be a fourth order polynomial. And because it would be fourth order polynomial, you are only going to get an approximate solution if you if you are working with if you are working with. Uh, mm, a subset which can only allow up to cubic functions. Now, what we learn from here is while trying to get an approximate solution, your subset, okay, is general for all the different problems. No matter what, uh, whether you have only bending moment, only concentrated moment, or only concentrated force, or you also have distributed load and the distributed load also didn't have to be uniformly distributed load. The distributed load could be itself a sine function. But your approach remains general. And this generality of approach, okay, is what is the essence of a numerical method. In a numerical method, you want to make things routine. You want to make things uh, such that you are able to code that in, into a computer. That computer can handle that. The computer doesn't have to be the judge that what sort of function is there and then it has to do symbolic integration. Okay. So you are making the method general irrespective of what sort of forcing function Q is. And if at all Q is non-zero. You are not basing your choice of function on that judgment. You are making it general. Okay. So that's what is different from tr while trying to get an exact solution. Okay. So try all of these three cases and verify that for the third case, you are not getting the exact solution. But for the first two cases, you are definitely going to get the exact solution. Also, if you combine case one and case two, that then also you are going to get exact solution. It's only when you incorporate a bit of case three that you are going to get an approximate solution. Okay, Achha. in addition to the assignment one, I'm also going to give, give, give you one more assignment, which is of course a simply supported beam. Pinned over here. 
roller over here on either side you have moments m1 and m2 both counter clockwise then you have distributed load for the time being consider uniformly distributed load so the length is l and halfway between two supports that you are also providing a concentrated force p okay and considering this particular function try to get the approximate solutions and check again here except for the distributed load you are only going to get exact solution and that for distributed load you are going to get an approximate solution so uh, the function is c0 times x minus uh, times l, l minus x plus Achha. No, you cannot do that, right? So this one is the first term. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This one is the is this five zero? Yes, each of them satisfy that uh, the essential boundary condition. Yes, so let's call them C1, C2 and C3. Is this how it's, it is supposed to be? Achha, one more thing about uh, Rayleigh-Ritz method. Uh, I could have taken, let's say, W tilde equals 0 plus C1 xs cube and C2 x to the power 4. Now, this is not allowed. Okay, Your polynomial should be complete. If one term, uh, I mean, See, a fourth order polynomial, a second order polynomial, let's say this one, C0 plus C1x plus C2x squared is also a cubic polynomial. And it is also a fourth order polynomial. Okay. So, dropping a term uh, which comes before, okay, makes the polynomial incomplete. So, that's not allowed. Okay. Mm, in any of the methods that you would be discussing in our uh, our, our class. Mm -hmm. So for none of them, this one is allowed. Okay. Uh, achha, for the simply supported beam, only take this first expression, only take W tilde equals this. Okay and uh, check for which case do you get the exact solution and for which case you do not get exact solution. 
Okay. So this is your assignment number two. Uh, sir, uh, I wanted to ask something. Hello? I to you that you that you have to that to I will solve the